Welcome back to Hoodoo TV, I'm Hoosier. Next up on our Image Expo 2018 press coverage is where's the furthest place from here? Matthew Rosenberg and Tyler Boss are spending some time with us at the press conference. You are now watching Hoodoo TV. My name is Matthew, this is Tyler. Hello. Um, I'm writing and he is drawing a new book for Image called What's the Furthest Place From Here? Uh, that will be out November of this year starting. Um, it's a uh, series about, uh, it's a, we're not, this is all very new to us, so we're, it's, a, it's a little clunky, so bear with us. It's a, we're, we're bringing you guys a book that is early in the process in some ways, um, but we've been developing it for a while, but we just haven't talked about it very much. Um, it's a book about, uh, it's a coming of age story set after the end of the world, and it's about uh, a future where uh, child gangs run everything. The, the world is, is nothing but child gangs. And our story um, starts and is, follows a gang who live in a record store. They're a gang of young punk rock kids who, who live, eat, and sleep in a record store. And new wave kids. Yeah, there's wave some wave new wave kids. Really? There's some punk rock let, kids. Let, let's enjoy Division fans. There's a, too. yeah, there's, there's like some hardcore kids. But um, they live in a record store and uh, they're trying to fight to survive and, and fighting with these gangs who live in other uh, buildings and, and sort of, they're all kind of playing roles of adults in, in a certain way that they don't fully understand. Um, and our, the story is about uh, a 15-year-old girl named Sid who decides to leave for reasons that will become clearer later. Um, on page five. On page five. No, <laughs> she, she, yes. Um, Sid sets out into the wasteland um, where they don't go, where no one goes. And her gang has to decide if they follow her or let her go. And it's sort of about their journey and her journey and how they mirror each other and what they mean and the things they discover along the way. So it's, uh, you know, a, a pretty dark coming of age story, but it's also about, you know, the things, the things we love and the things that are the most important to us. And I mean, the way we define ourselves, the, the, the way that, especially as teenagers or, you know, uh, preteens or whatever, that we define ourselves by the subcultures we, you know, want to be a part of or, or choose to be a part of. And, um, you know, the, allowing these different outside ideas of culture to, to influence who you are as a person as opposed to what your authentic self is. Yeah. Or, you know, the idea of that. Yeah, I think it, it's a lot of just about um, what the choices you make and who you are and what you want to become in your life um, and <clears throat> and how those choices can hurt the people around you and what they mean for the world in general. Yeah. I mean, in a way to, I mean what keeps it from being maybe such a... Str I mean, it is a, a genre book. The, yeah. book. the book very much has a sci-fi... I don't know. Uh, it's it's hard to say. It's, I wouldn't call it sci-fi. I wouldn't call it um, drama. It, it, it has a genre bent. Yeah. In the way yeah. that it our has, earlier book, Four Kids, has like a crime bent. This one has maybe an overall idea of, of genre to it. Yeah. I think a big thing for us was trying to make sure the book has things that feel very familiar and things that feel very unique. And so it has, you know a ton of heart and comedy to it but it also is very dark in places and it's a coming of age story but it's also a dystopian apocalyptic story in some ways and it's um it's a lot of different things it's uh, like i said before it's a, it's a book about the things you love and how they define you and, and for me and tyler like our love of comics has sort of defined our lives in a lot of ways and so these are kids who we sort of see we see ourselves in them, I think, in a lot of ways. These are kids who very much the things that they care about are everything to them and what that's like and what that's like to be in the world. Um, yeah. on, a, on a sort of more personal level, it's like, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I love comics and comics 
you know, I don't feel weird saying like comics saved my life. Like I, I don't know what I would be doing without comics. Like it's the only thing I know how to do. Yeah, it's the only thing I, I care about, and it's uh, other than my girlfriend, um, and I guess my family. I'm backpedaling. Is you know, it's comics. Is uh, it? It's it's been with me my whole life, and it's it's helped me th- through understand the world around me in a lot of ways. And I think these are kids who are dealing with the same thing, and that's something we wanted to explore. Is like how the things you love get you through a world that doesn't love you. That yeah. sounds really or, depressing. Or it's also it. funny, guys. It's, I mean, it is. It's a, it's, right. Yeah, it's, it's a funny book, but it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, hopefully we, we're, we're doing a bit of everything, uh, but well. Um, do you guys have, do you want to question? Yeah, are there questions? One thing I saw in one of the press images was the based on a true story. Yeah, <laughs> okay, those, those did go out. Um, <laughs> Talk about that. It's based uh, on a true story. Um, you know, <laughs> it's a... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this is a, well, based on a true story was, um, without giving too much away, it was sort of a joke I had that originally we would just start and it's very grounded and then you would, it would say based on a true story and then the most insane thing ever would happen that is totally impossible and unrealistic. Um, and we just thought that was funny for a long time yeah. for you to read based on a true story and then turn the page and it's just like, oh, there's a 60 foot monster eating a city. and. Um, that's sort of the kind of thing that we thought was funny. But then we pulled back from that and the story sort of changed. But I, I like the idea that, like, I mean, in some ways the story is, is the, the, um, the emotional elements are true. I, I think it's really, like, it's the most personal thing I've ever written. I yeah. think it's... I mean, if you were to change... The difference with this story is you could, we could tell this story without having it be post-apocalyptic. Yeah. We could tell this story and say, like, and it, I think it's a very true story we chose to do it because it's more fun visually and there's a lot of other different things that we can do with the story as a post-apocalyptic and we can heighten uh the emotions and the ideas that we're trying to get across by doing that yeah um but yeah the the idea that it's true is not that you know it's and this happened in 1986 yeah in longview north dakota that's like that's a real place oh that's a real place um um yeah, so it's it's a joke, but it's also not. I, we want to sort of talk about the... It, it's very emotionally honest story for me and for Tyler, and so that is why that remained. And maybe it makes people laugh, and maybe it confuses people. It makes us laugh, so it stays in the book. Yeah. That's sort of our... our barometer for barometer everything. for everything yeah. is like, I'm Can like, oh, do you think this is funny? And there's a lot of like, no one else is going to think this is funny, and we're like, ah, <laughs> fuck it. Stays in. Yeah. I thought it was funny. Oh, right, there you good. go. Good. We got one. We got, yeah. We're good then. We're, We're done. Yeah. <laughs> That's bonus. Um, I noticed a theme through your work, um, even before this pitch, that uh, youth and you know friendship and things like that uh, play a little central core in some of the stuff that you write about. I know you talked earlier about how you can change the scenery around those core dynamics and heighten some things and maybe suppress other things, but at the heart of it, like, uh, do you guys revisit your own personal relationships uh, during those ages when you were growing up, the kids and characters that you write? Like, is that, I know that there's a workmanship to creating characters and developing a story, but at what point, you know, do you also then bring some of you? Oh, I mean, it's... it's Everything. It's everything. Yeah. It's a, a constant. I, uh, I mean, half the people in some of these books are named for our friends and, yeah. and things like that. I mean, yeah. we're wholly unoriginal. We're just, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, just, just, we're just ripping from our lives. No, but I mean, it, there's funny things. Like uh, in, in Four Kids Walking to a Bank, uh, there's a scene where um, uh, one of the kids is riding a bike and he's wearing like a towel as a cape and a hockey helmet instead of a bike helmet. Yeah, you run a, yeah full cage. A full cage hockey, hockey helmet. And I was like, that's so funny. And Tyler was like, oh, that's like a Buffalo thing. That's like what me and my friends did. We yeah. wore like hockey helmets and rode our bikes around. And you it's like these... Li- you got, you got one yeah, you got one helmet. So one kid and... gets to live. Right. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's revisiting a bunch of stuff. It's actually... Uh, I was actually talking to Rick Remender about this recently. Name drop. And, uh, nobody knows who that is. <laughs> nobody knows who that is. He's a, he's a cool up-and-coming creator. Check out his work. Um, where like... Yeah, we, I keep revisiting the well of my life for influences and anecdotes. And it's, it's funny because my close friends are always like, that's something you said to me. Or like, that's something that happened to us. And like, I'll drop that stuff in. And, uh, and I said to Rick, I said, you know, how much do you... And we're talking about that personal element that is you in your work. 
and your life experiences, like literally. And I said, how much of that, like I spend so much time just sitting in front of a computer writing now. And I said, I get really scared that like, I'm not creating those new experiences, that I'm gonna be forever living these experiences that are in the books now, that in 30 years I'm gonna be talking about what I talked about and we can never go home and four kids walking to a bank and what's the furthest place from here, like that those same moments are gonna keep coming up. And Rick was like, yeah, no, it's a, it's a real concern. Uh, you have to live your life and, and do things. Like, what did you do when you were 19 that you loved? Like, go do that again, like, and see how it's different and recontextualize it and do the same kind of thing. And that's, that's besides being really good advice, I think, to live by, but, like, something I've really embraced and, and I'm trying to do is just, like, yeah, I think, I think, like, later this year, I'm just going to move to Iceland for a month just because I can. And I want to be like, I don't. I've never been there, so I'm just going to rent an apartment and go be in Iceland for a month because I want to have new experiences. And they have nice hot springs, apparently. Yeah, it's not really for me. No, no. I don't know. Maybe you haven't tried it. That's yeah, a new I guess, experience. That's a new, well, yeah. I guess that goes against. You sit in an apartment a lot. Sitting in an apartment in Iceland, but in Iceland it's different. The right. plugs are different. That's fair. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, anyone else have questions? Does that answer your question? It does. I, I have one other question. Uh, just a quick follow up. So. When you're writing these characters and you're reading your own life story kind of in around the edges or making the core elements to it, um, do you ever think maybe I've gone too far or I've brought out stuff that I don't really want to share publicly? Like, are there part, parts where you, you start building momentum and then all of a sudden you realize, like, maybe that's too personal, maybe for me or for others, and I have to pull back? Um, I mean, that's the nice thing about doing fiction is that nobody knows. There's things that are in our books that are things that have been really hard, I mean, things in our lives that maybe are, are really personal and, and not something we would tell people about, but it's a piece of fiction, so nobody, you know, yeah, it's a... There, there are things in my work that I take out, I've taken out because they're not mine, because I don't own that experience or that emotional weight, and I have felt like it wasn't my place to tell those stories. Uh, with that said... No, I, if it's me and my life experience, like, yeah, I put it in there. It's raw and honest, and that's sort of why I make comics, is to be able to talk about this stuff and get it off my chest and, and, and tell things that are honest. I mean, I think, you know, we can't talk too much about some of the stuff in what's the first place from here that, that affects that, but in Four Kids Walking to a Bank, it's like her relationship with her father is my relationship with my father and it's uh you've never seen someone more nervous and anxious than me giving that book to my dad to read it's like I, I couldn't sleep the night before I was terrified um and he loved it and that meant the world to me but it's also like I didn't maybe he wouldn't and maybe it you know and I don't think people pick up on that I mean I just said it <laughs> to a bunch of reporters but um I don't think people necessarily will pick up on that that's the thing but I hope the emotional honesty comes through so like yeah I think you have to leave that stuff in when when you can thanks for watching and we also want to thank Matthew and Tyler for spending some time with us at the press conference also make sure to subscribe to us here at YouTube follow us on Twitter at Hoodoo TV and also special thanks to our guys over at Outright Geekery follow them for anything geeky